Salam, you are watching News Click and 420 Grams. Uh, as you can tell, if you've been following Indian football in any way at all over the past several decades, uh, you will recognize uh, the gentleman sitting to my right, Bhaichun Bhutia, former captain uh, and one of the legends of the sport in this country. Uh, Bhaichun has today filed his nomination for the post of president of the All India Football Federation, the body that runs the sport in the country. Uh, an election that has been the subject of much uh, litigation, controversy and has eventually resulted in a FIFA ban being imposed on uh, India which is in force currently. We do not know of course how things will proceed in that direction but as per uh, the orders of the Supreme Court of India and uh, then followed up on by the Committee of Administrators, we have a schedule for elections to be held so that a democratic body can be put in place to run the day-to-day -day affairs of uh, football in the country and Baichung will be representing uh, the players, uh, a very important part, obviously, of the entire football ecosystem on whose labor, on whose efforts, uh, the entire structure of football is built. And who, it must be mentioned that uh, both the Committee of Administrators as well as the National Sports Code of India is very strongly in favor of the inclusion of eminent athletes, professional athletes uh, who have done well for the country in the actual administration of the sport. Uh, Baichi's nomination was seconded by fellow uh, eminent players uh, and he will be contesting against, among others, uh, another former football player and former teammate of Baichi, Kalyan Chobe, who has uh, been nominated by the Gujarat and Arunachal Pradesh Football Associations for the same post. Uh, we'll get into some of those details separately, but uh, we're here today to talk to Baichi about his candidature what he's looking for as uh, from the, the office of the president of the All India Football Federation and how he thinks things will proceed in the coming days with all the litigation that's going on. Bajun, thanks for talking to us uh, as always. Uh, it's been an eventful day for you. If you could uh, start off by just taking us through uh, how this nomination filing process went uh, and, and all of those things. So I think first of all there's a lot of confusion uh, and still it is and the final verdict is still not yet given. Who's going to vote, who's going to be in that electoral collage, um, that's not uh, still, uh, it's still unknown but so far at the moment we are I think 7 to 2 of us, 50% players and 50% state association at the moment. The hearing again is on Monday so we don't know what the hearing or what the outcome it may be. So, yeah, it's been eventful because uh, because of confusion, uh, you know, we were also not too sure whether we will be filing, is it valid, whether after the FIFA ban is the elections going to happen uh, and who can, you know, nominate or who can, you know, fight elections, is the dates all what Supreme Court, is it still valid? So there's a lot of confusion, mm. but uh, with uh, still we all went with the last Supreme Court uh, verdict uh, with the dates what was given mm. and today was 19th, the final day. So it was a last moment thing, so everybody was ru rushing state associations to uh, players, so there's quite a lot of big crowd in, in the football house today. Yeah. Yeah, just to quickly, I guess, recap it for, on the 3rd of August, this order came from the Supreme Court detailing what the schedule of elections will be. And then, of course, after that, the FIFA ban happened, throwing everything up in the air. Mm -hmm. And I suppose in that uh, fog or the cloud of confusion that you were mentioning, mm -hmm. uh, perhaps uh, the process was engineered such that only some parties who are fully aware of what is happening, uh, will be in a position to file their nominations. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, you managed to avoid that eventuality and at least you and several other people are now in the running for that position. Yeah, so there was no clarity because once the verdict had happened on the 3rd of August, uh, as, as you happened, then after that the ban happened. Mm -hmm. So we were confused why was the ban happening because Supreme Court, uh, FIFA wanted uh, elected pre president, elected member to come from the of any country and for us it was India. Mm. So we were going to elections and getting an elected member to represent India. But despite that as well, the ban came in. So we were not sure whether that election is still going to happen or mm. nominations should be filed. So that confusion kept happening and obviously for as players, we were not you know fully aware what is the real situation. Yeah. So anyway, we managed to file it today. Mm. Players also tend to be in many of these cases the last to find out about how regulation is happening and, and what is going on in terms of these things. But uh, do you view it uh, to begin with as a positive step that 
there is this desire to include players and do you think players can actually play uh, an effective and a valuable contribution to the administration of sport i'm sure they can because uh, first of all i think it's very very challenging uh, for players to get into the system and to when you say federation is the state associations uh, body you know when you're in state association uh, um, through that you go to federation so federation is all about member states hmm. so if you look at the history as well you you don't see in india either in state or in a federation that the players have taken the lead either in state as a president or in federation hmm. and and taken the lead and ran football in their state or in the country hmm. Why is that not happened? I don't know, but obviously it is a difficult system to get for the players to get in. Right. So one of the reason is that now yes, football has been run by people who have been running football, mm. and it is for sure that not many players have been involved in that. So we have seen how they've run. Whether it's good or bad is up to people to decide and to, you know take their own call. Yeah. But you can see easily that players have not been involved. And why they've not got got into those positions is also one difficult system to get into it. So mm. this judgment of Supreme Court obviously was a very welcome judgment for all the players, mm. and we felt that as players, I think there's a lot to contribute mm. uh, for the development of game in India, mm. not just by playing, but also by coming into administration of Indian football. Mm. And it is also at the way, uh, at the same time, challenge for footballers to also prove that they can be good administrators, yeah. because right now a lot of people would say, you know, they'd say, oh, no, footballer, you can't be good administrator, you can't do this, mm. you can't do that. Mm. Um, so I think people just try and discard in every way. So that is where I think we need to prove, and to prove that the opportunity has to come in. Right. And this was one of the good opportunity for any players to mm. uh, show uh, show and tell that you know footballers can be good administrators. Mm. One of the arguments that's been consistently made against players taking leadership roles in sports administration has been that to get anything done in India, you need the support of the government, and uh, therefore so many politicians of various parties and various views have uh, headed various sports associations around the country. Uh, do you think that as a former player yourself, in your experience, when you have approached problems related to your sport in whatever shape, uh, that you have felt the need to have some kind of political maibaps uh, blessing in order to achieve those goals? See, I think in India, in anything there is politics involved and uh, in every department or every field politics is involved and politicians and the politics play a major role mm. and uh, and we can see in all the sports and we can see even in EIFF All India Football Federation uh, elections so obviously yes for anything to achieve it's sad but it's the reality yes politically you need that kind of you know you need that political support to either win elections mm. or if you are if you want it uh, for your yeah, sport to grow. you know grow or develop, so in a way I think it is it is it is it's not a good example and not the right system to do that. But uh, I think if 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 you have your roadmap, uh, if you have your ideas roadmaps, uh, and have your I think plans. Then I think it's possible to not get any politically political support for your events to succeed or football to succeed. Mm. And I think cricket has been doing that. Um, but obviously cricket and the entire nation follows that. Mm. So I think football and not just football, other sports as well. I think down the line, we need to make sure that we run our football associations, state associations and the federations properly. So that we don't have to always go to political leaders for things to happen. Mm. So that is where I think it is a challenge again. But if we get our systems right, mm. then I don't think we should always go to politician to get one sponsor from some PSU yeah. yeah. or some corporates. Yeah. 
let's get our system right let's organize our leagues properly mm. let's make sure that you know our tournaments are there and once you do that i think then you can approach the televisions the corporates and invest uh, you know sponsors to come in as an outsider or as a neutral party in this one would assume that versus a candidate who has some political backing because that will always lead to somebody who will be a supporter of one party somebody who will be a supporter of another versus someone like you coming into that position as someone who has always been associated with the sport and is first known for your role and contribution to that sport uh, wouldn't one be more free in this case of the same kind of third party interference that has led to this entire ban no i would say and i would request that i hope none of the political parties get involved and i sincerely feel that they should not and they should see that the best person goes in and and uh, and and also looking at the background and seeing uh, the profile uh, just not also playing for in, for example our players in terms of playing in terms of after playing in ter- what is what is it done with football mm. um, so those kind of things are important to to see mm. and i hope um, you know the political people also would want to support the right person to come in make sure that the game goes forward mm. rather than making it political so i'm hoping that uh, none of the political parties would try and get involved and hopefully i hope they all see that the best man wins and and football the uh, football is the winner at the end you you say that by word like one of the candidates is very much a member of the ruling party at the center and has been nominated by a state or associ- two state associations in fact that that are uh, also in states where the bjp uh, has the state government so it it does seem clear that at least uh, the ruling party at the center has jumped into it like they have in several other sports you were mentioning cricket earlier as well uh, that is not also outside the ambit uh, so is has football now are we seeing this kind of interest in football because uh, there's some understanding that it's achieved that level of uh, nationwide importance and therefore uh, you know we're, we're seeing this kind of uh, situation see i only can say is that uh, you know the football should be the winner and we need to make sure that the right people comes in and political interference would not be there mm. and i hope it does not happen obviously as you're saying you know uh, uh, a colleague of mine kalyan chowdhury who's nominated has been nominated by gujarat and ronsar but i hope uh, also you know people uh, in in the political circles are are aware that uh, that we should not let sports get into you know especially at least uh, in terms of election and let the best person win let the game win mm. and uh, and come and support um, you know whoever is the winner mm. so i'm hoping that uh, that the political interference would not be there because at the end we all are working for the betterment of of the game mm. so on that way i hope it it happens so in that sense i guess uh, depending on how things go you would be open to creating kind of a wider platform where everyone can come together sit at a table have it the dialogue and discussion about what is needed and what should be the next steps forward yeah ideally i think uh, sometimes i feel you know the elect- election system in india should not just pause but even the main general election should be on lot of debates leaders sitting on the coming not sitting standing on the stage and debating about their policies and all that mm-hmm. and and the voters can actually see what the plan what the ideas is what what is it and then vote accordingly mm. with the leaders there so i hope that those things can happen mm. but sadly it it does not happen mm. so i can only say is i don't know about all this but i can only say is that uh, you know i would sincerely want to contribute for the development of football in india mm. and uh, as a player i can only say that we've not had that opportunity Uh, for many many years or decades that uh, players have been involved and are are leading our the state association and the country mm. to contribute so i think this is a opportunity and i hope that uh, decision by fifa of giving 50% reservation to players to vote would stand and uh, we can all contribute on that point by because fifa uh, in its letter to the aff one of the things that it has uh, sort of rejected is the very same progressive step of including players 
in the electoral college that then get to elect the president and the treasurer and the executive committee uh given that this ban is now in place and the matter is going to be heard in the supreme court and and the center it seems is also involved in the process and they asked for the next hearing on monday which is after the filing of uh, the nominations for that adding to of course the confusion that exists uh given that scenario and of course with the under 17 women's world cup coming up the 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 sort of very narrow window that exists mm-hmm. if the court turns around and says okay let's go back to the status quo as it existed before 2014 17 whether it was 2014 or whatever date they choose and the players lose this very hard won uh, sort of right to vote what steps next for you then as the candidate in question representing this section so first of all i don't think fifa would interfere on the electoral process saying that who should vote who should not vote mm. fifa's clear code is it has to be an elected member uh, you know you can't have a nominated person heading the federation or mm. any any elected post so that is what whether you have a army guy fighting a police guy fighting or a firefighter fighting or a clubs fighting or mm. a players fighting it's up to that countries and the federations code of con- uh, co- uh, the law and the code which they follow it so i don't think fifa would interfere in who should vote who should not vote right it also has every country has got different code or a sports code or a laws that allows mm. so there are countries which is ruled by kings there are the countries which is ruled by military mm. so i think they don't they would not interfere so i don't see why fifa would say that this many players can vote this can many players can vote that right. i don't think is is they would interfere in that if mm. the country's code and law and federation's constitution is that they would not their only thing is that it has to be elected mm. so i don't see that um, fifa's interference on that so yeah what was the second question you were saying now in terms of uh, we don't know what is going to happen on monday with the decision yeah so we are hoping for the best and we are hoping that the players representation is there mm. uh, in 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 50% what the supreme court's order was there mm. and 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 we hope that again as i said earlier i'm repeating that players representative is there and that players have the equal say in contribution of indian football because we've not had it for decades and decades from the time federation started i think no players have had that opportunity um, you mean either in state or uh, federation so right. it's it's a great opportunity for players to come and work for the betterment along with state association for the development of football but hmm. so you have it i guess from baichun bhutia uh, straight from the horse's mouth uh, hope that on monday when the supreme court takes up this matter again they stick to their own order of august 3rd and go ahead with elections as determined by the court appointed committee of administrators we will of course be covering this subject uh, as long as it goes on uh, as we have been with everything uh, that happens in indian football uh, monday the next update until then if you need to know or want to know more about all of the uh, steps or phases that have led us up to this point we've got a couple of other videos out on both news league and 420 grams detailing how things have gone since as far back as 2009 2010 uh, thank you for watching and thank you once again bachun for thank taking the time and all the best for whatever happens next